All right, welcome to a quick introduction to Beowulf uh, because we have quite a lot of different material to cover this week. I wanted to give you all a little bit of background information to hopefully guide some of your reading. Uh, so to begin, what is Beowulf? Uh, it is generally considered to be an epic poem. Uh, some scholars, uh, most notably J.R.R. Tolkien, um, who author of uh, Lord of the Rings, does not think that Beowulf fits the description of an epic poem, but it does use some of the conventions of an epic poem that we have talked about throughout this semester. So for our purposes, uh, it is an epic. Uh, it is 3,182 lines of alliterative poetry, uh, and the alliterative poetry is important to the meter that uh, this poem uses. Uh, so all the other epic poems that we've looked at this semester utilize uh, dactylic hexameter, which we've called the epic meter. Um, but Beowulf uses what we call the Old English meter. Uh, it is written in Old English, uh, and as such, it has different poetic conventions. Um, so rather than placing stress on different syllables based on their location, in uh, in the poetic line, uh, Old English meter uses alliterative stress, meaning that it's going to repeat certain sounds in order to create its cadence and its uh, its rhythm and its stress. Uh, and it is possibly a recording of an oral tradition, although there is some debate to this, um, whether or not it was sort of written uh, originally written as a story, or whether it was a compilation of stories that used to be told orally. Uh, it was written sometime between 700 and 1000 CE, uh, and it is preserved in a single manuscript um, that was recorded sometime in the 12th century. Uh, so it is quite remarkable that we still have this story um, even after the manuscript was discovered, uh, it suffered some uh, fire damage, um, but we still have it around today. Um, and while it was written uh, sometime between 700 and 1000 CE, uh, the story itself takes place sometime around 500 CE. And because it was discovered in England, and because it is written in the Old English language, it is believed to have been written in England. Um, but it does not take place anywhere in England. Uh, the stories are more reflective of Scandinavian uh, and Norse mythology and culture, uh, and the actual location of the story is in Denmark and Sweden. Uh, which is called Gateland in the poem. Uh, and because it takes place in Gateland and Denmark, the main characters are the Gates and the Danes, um, and, but it was written by Anglo-Saxons. Uh, so we've talked a bit about Germanic tribes already. The Anglo-Saxons are uh, some of those Germanic tribes um, that settled in England. Um, and what's interesting to note is that at this time, at the time of the writing of Beowulf, um, the, the cultures in this area, particularly the Anglo-Saxons, were experiencing a conversion to Christianity. So we see a blending of mythology and Christianity in this text, uh, which will become important to our discussion later this week. And lastly, uh, as you read, a few themes to look for. Obviously, Christianity. Um, you will see some Christian themes arising, um, so it's important to sort of pick those out from some of the more uh, pagan or mythological aspects of the story. Uh, pay attention to how evil is depicted uh, and whether or not it is redeemable. Uh, and look at the depictions of good kings and good heroes, and think about uh, where those two sort of overlap, uh, and can one be both a good king and a good hero? 
Uh, and lastly, look for depictions of treasure and what that does to a person or a creature.